B cuts the C, Manafort flubs Uncle Sam, and ye ol' fear is in town! You watch a monkey news source! This is Monkey News Source with Tamara and Gordon. And now, Gordon Goodall! All right, welcome to Monkey News Source. I'm Gordon Goodall. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Monkey News Source. And uh, I want to take a quick second to welcome our home viewers and thank you once again for watching us on White Plains Community Media Facilities, or as I like to call them, WPCMF or WAPACAMF. And as always, I'd like to also introduce my lovely host and best friend, Hello. Tamara. Hi, everybody. Today we're holding interviews. Yes. Because we have some, we're, we're gonna, we, we've been growing at such a clip that we need some extra help here at we're Monkey News Source. We're trying to see if we can have uh, extra correspondence for right. our show. We're going to have some uh, interviews coming up. Today is interview day, so Today's we thought we'd day. hold them on camera with you guys now. Yeah. You know, what's a better test to see if someone can do something well? Yeah. If actually, you know, we, we put them on, on the hot seat right now and see how they do, they'll do like little mini interviews. We have a few interviews lined up. Exactly. So you want to bring in the first candidate? Sure. So let's see, who do we have here? Uh, I think the first guy's name is Mike. All right. Um, Mike, yes, we would like, Mike, uh, can somebody bring Mike into the studio? Mike, can you come in, please? Mike, next, Mike. Mike. Yeah, someone called for me. Yes, hi, Mike, how are you? You're here to audition for the correspondence job. Lights are so bright. Yes, I want to be the news person guy thing. Okay, I, okay I, yeah, it says here on your resume you worked in a local news for five years. That's yep. very impressive. Clean the cars. Um, oh, sorry, what did you say? I clean the cars. You clean, clean the, the cars. Clean the cars. All right, well, yeah. you got to start somewhere, right, Mike? So, uh, yeah. Mike, if you were to interview us, you know, just get kind of throw out a few questions. Give me an example of what it would be like if you were a correspondent. Oh, on our show. Uh, all right. Um, if you weren't you and you were somebody else, would you still like the other you, or would you be enemies? Uh, I mean, okay. <laughs> oh, that, I mean, I got another one. That's um, pretty good. Okay. Uh, are tennis balls fuzzy because it makes them easier to hit? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna say yes. That's very specific. Have, uh, when you go on a boat, do you get seasick or airsick or both? I mean, <laughs> oh, jeez, Mike, are you okay? <laughs> Mike, are you drunk? Maybe a little. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure you're feeling okay. Because yeah. we yeah, don't good. have any liability I insurance. I, I would take a him. boat. I would get sick on the boat, I guess. Sick, you would get sick, seasick yeah. on the boat, sick. Uh, I guess <laughs> seasick. If I want to see. I guess, right? yeah. I feel a little sick right now. Oh no, Mike! Can, uh, we'll get some water from Mike. Can we get some water from Mike? Mike, okay. Well, we're gonna we'll we'll, we'll call you, okay, buddy? Yeah, thanks. Okay. We'll call I'll you. wait by the phone. Okay, okay. that's great. You for just... both of you to call. Okay. okay. Can't thanks wait. for coming in, Mike. Thanks, Mike. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, we'd like to take our next 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 candidate, please. Can you send in the next candidate? Oh. So here we have. I think this is Roy. Roy. Okay. Double 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 double. Oh, okay. Oh, hi, uh, great. I, I, hi, Roy. I'm Tamara. This is Gordon. Double double double. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, interesting. Um, uh, where, where, I have where, a few questions. Yeah. Where are you from? Yeah, where are you from? Okay. Okay. Um, is that is that close to the station? Because we don't want you to have a hard. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, Do you understand okay. what he's saying? Interesting. I, I, have I have no, no idea, idea what he's saying. I have no idea either. But he seems like a cheery guy. He does. He's nice and bright. And I, <laughs> and I know better. I don't want to piss off, piss him off. Uh, so do you have any questions for us as like a sample oh, interview yeah. if you want to ask us some questions? <clears throat> okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, it looks like he's editorializing. Can I, we get a close-up yeah, so he can do his editorial? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> right to camera there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 no. Are you okay? Horrible. Are you okay? Uh, hey, whoa, whoa, are you okay, buddy? It sounds like whatever uh, happened was a bad experience. No, 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 no. Okay? it's okay. Okay, all right. Whoa, okay, Gordon. Okay. Well, uh, that sounded like a bad experience. He doesn't want to be touched. Um, well, thank you for wow. coming in. Okay. Well, no, we'll call you. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll call you. Oh, he left all seas leaving oh, all sad. Oh, so sad. I wish I understood well, what he was saying. I know. I, it's, it's tough and to hire somebody when they don't speak the language. And exactly. Like, how do you communicate? Like, we're in communication. Seriously. So, I mean, he, he was very adorable. He was so cute. But I just, I, I can't. I wish I could have hugged him. I don't know. Maybe we'll have some next, we'll have some next luck with the next candidate. Next, yeah. next, please. Send in the next person, please. Oh. 
Oh, good hello. afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to see you both. Oh, oh well, good afternoon. Nice, nice to, to see, see you as well. You. Very excited to be here. Cannot wait to give a foray into this wonderful medium called television. Oh, oh well, perfect. you have an outstanding voice. Oh, you are too kind. Too, too kind. Um, well, thank you. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. Um, so uh, how long have you been in the industry? Well, I've... Uh, Viewed from afar, as you, if you will, I'm a, an armchair anchor, <laughs> to borrow a sports term. <laughs> Is that a sports Always been a fan. He's pretty oh, okay, funny. Okay. You're a pretty well, funny guy. I'm glad you came in. And uh, uh, would you like to ask us some, you know, some sample questions as a correspondent then? Certainly, certainly. Okay, okay, okay great. What's in your mind? What do you pledge allegiance to when reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? Mm. Wow, that's a pretty deep Very thought. Deep, interesting. Yeah, nice Very question. Oh, I have another one. I have another one. Yeah, okay. I want to hear more. Where did Webster look things up when he wrote the dictionary? Yeah. Mm. Oh. It's like a trick question almost. Mm. Interesting. That's word. very. I, cool. I don't know. Is that rhetorical? It's the one to think on, isn't it? Yes, it is. It certainly is. Yeah, that's pretty good. He's got mm. some good, good skills. Good, good questions. Yeah. All right, I, I'm sorry. You have any more questions? Uh, just one last one. Okay, please. Is it okay if? When I get the job, I only work from 6.15 to 6.22 a.m. on Sundays and Saturdays every other month. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's like a really the, long, labor-intensive yeah. type of job. You never really have time off because you... 14 be minutes every other month. That's very what you get. dedicated to the craft. 14 you know, minutes. We'll probably I mean, send you on location and... and, mm, and yeah. In those 14 minutes, it'll be great. Okay. It's going to be, I mean, we'll have to see if we have room in the schedule for it. Yeah, for All sure. right, I'm looking forward to the negotiation. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. <right>, well, <laughs> thank, <laughs> well, thank you well, for joining well, us. Let's get back to you. Well, see I, I ya! Hope, I hope we have his number because, you know, we could. 14 minutes are up. Bye. That, okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. I mean, we could use him for interstitials I or something. Guess so. Station IDs he or something really like that. He's really particular with, like, his times if he's, you know, it doesn't seem like he's very flexible. Wait, can we get him back? Can we get him back one more time? Can we just get him back okay, one more time? Okay, sure. Um, hey, I'm, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You sorry. I think he heard you. Could you just, I, I just, I love your voice so much. Could you just look into camera mm -hmm. and say, you're watching Monkey News Source? You're watching Monkey News Source. Wow, that's wow. Time's something up. else. Well, Thank he, he you. Well, that, that was he it. That was left. because he's on a tight schedule. He's tight. Fourteen. He's <laughs> wow, tight that's, fourteen. <laughs> that's incredible. Well, uh, you know, we're gonna have to review some more applicants yeah, and, and check out more. some resumes. But we might, we might have been finding somebody. There. And if you guys think one of the three were great, you can always uh, email us and at the station and let us know which one you thought was pretty good. Or if you have anybody that you know, send them our way. That'd be great. We're always looking for new, new talent. New correspondents. Hard, hard, new, new talents hard to find. Yes. So you know, we got a great show tonight. Totally. And I, I just want to say. Um, but I'm really excited to have our next guest. So, uh, you want to bring him out now? Is it time for the guest time? Time for the guest. I think it's time for the guest. Let's run the package and introduce our guest. Tyler Bunch is an actor, puppeteer, voiceover artist, director, and producer. As a puppeteer, Tyler has worked with the Jim Henson Company. He originated the characters of Pop, Trilo, and Doc Hogg on Bear in the Big Blue House. Has been a regular performer on Sesame Street since 1993 and with the Muppets since 1999. In addition to his work for the Jim Henson Company, Bunch has created and performed puppets for PBS, Nickelodeon, and Disney. He has acted off-Broadway. His television credits include Law & Order, Criminal Intent, Personal of Interest, and Law & Order Special Victims Unit. He has done voiceover work for video games, too. And he's also in the new version of The Tick. Please welcome to the Monkey News Source, Tyler Bunch. All right, all right. That is a heck yes. of a real. I'm so I mean, excited to interview Tyler. I wish I have done that much work. I know. That's a lot of great Jeez, quality outstanding. work. It's amazing. I feel like maybe I'm like under under making, I'm not making enough well, effort you know, in her, life. You know, we have a really great show here. That's a lot of stuff. So let's welcome <laughs> him, ladies and gentlemen, our guest, Tyler Bunch. Greetings, greetings. Hi, How are Tyler. You? Greetings, How indeed. are you? I'm going to give you a nice, nice to see you, sir. Oh, wow. How's it going? Was, let me, I'm sorry to interrupt that. Let me get I'm out of the way for you I'm just giving a nice little... Well, Tyler, how are you, man? I'm well. How nice are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. So you know you are, you are come hang out. You are you're, you're what they consider in the business a uh, I, I don't know Spanish that well. What's number <laughs> five? Cinco. Cinco. You are a cinco threat. Oh wow. You are a cinco oh, threat because you, you got you got the puppeteering. Right. The acting. Yeah. You Directing got the and voice producing. artist. Right. Right. Or I guess that's VO artist maybe. VO, VO artist. Producer. VO artist. Yes. And director. Correct. That's five. That's five. Things. Cinco. That's unreal. Yeah, you're it's a amazing. single threat, man. Yep. So how do you manage? Down, how do you do, it real? How do you find the time? <laughs> how do you find the time? Um, well, that's the thing is that like with with artistry, you spend most of your time getting ready to do the thing that you need to do. You know, it's it's mostly prep. So 
if I line things up right, I doing one while I'm prepping for the next and so on and so on so that you kind of just keep each piece of the puzzle, you know, in the air, so to speak. And, and so I, I guess that's mixing metaphors. You keep all the balls in the air. Keep, keep them juggling. all the balls yeah. in the air, juggling all the time. If you had to pick one ball that's your favorite of all those balls, which would it be in a non-dirty sense? <laughs> Any least dirty. Oh wait, sense non-dirty sense. Yeah. I'm sorry. Darn, I have, I have to start my thinking. Like if you if you had to like pick, acting, if you had to pick, you're like you know for the rest over, of my life, yeah. I only do one of these things. Which one would it be? Well, the piece, uh, the ingredient of all of those things mm. that has had me wanting to do them all is being part of good storytelling. I always want to be part of a really good story. So if that means that it's me, if I'm behind the scenes whispering to other people what to do, if I'm playing with a puppet, whatever it is, just being part of a, of a really well-told narrative that either moves, educates, or delights people in some way, shape, or form. That is the answer of a true artist. It is. It really is. That's really the answer is. of a true artist and someone who doesn't want to box himself out of not getting anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so answer the question without <laughs> answering the question. <laughs> the answer the question. I would um, like to professionally do whatever is going to pay me. Whatever, <laughs> whatever um, brings the Tyler, so when, how did you get your start in puppetry? Puppetry, uh, like falling into the art of puppetry, kind of happened to me in high school. My, my high school drama coach was friends with a woman who was running the community outreach of a local mall that was being built. And the particular folks that built this mall system, um, they have several around the country. And at the time that they were constructing them, there was a marionette theater in each of these malls. Mm. So uh, she needed locally talented kids who could, you know, artistically fulfill the the job requirements and I had never never dealt with marionettes before but did it for a couple summers and it was fun I learned a lot but it didn't really grow on me and then in college I kind of fell into what they call arm and rod or Muppet style puppetry again mm. as a hobby that kind of built so that when I moved to New York um, to pursue an acting career the puppetry was just part of the toolkit and yeah. when you got into let's say um, the Muppets right what was very often people just say they kind of glaze over they go I fell into it but how right. did you get, like, was there an audition? Oh, for the Muppets? Well, you know, when, when you hit the big time. Right. The big time. Point, you know, you, you've practiced and stuff. Still waiting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, is there is there auditions that you're going to that you're like, oh, this is it. I'm I'm in now. Right. You know? Well, the, the Muppets are, are different because it's kind of like, it's probably more akin to, like, uh, ballet or opera in that there are major opera companies around the globe and then there are the huge well-known ones well-known ones that that blow everyone else out of the water so mm. to speak so you work yourself up through this through the kind of regional things until you get your shot at the big one um for me i had worked on a little kids show uh cable access kids show that we did puppet stuff on where i was going to college in florida and i sent a tape of the stuff that i had done to the muppets mm. and uh eventually got somebody to look at it and that's when i was invited to come spectate on Sesame Street. You go in and you just kind of watch how things are done. And if if they like you and they feel like they vibe well, then they'll call you when they need a lot of people. So for me, that meant a total of 12 days over the first four years of my association with the, with the Jim Henson. Oh, company. crazy. Wow. So, um, I mean, so, were you a nervous wreck your first day on the Sesame first Street? Day, the first day was kind of... I mean, you have to play it cool, right? You want to be a pro. Exactly. But you're on Sesame Street, like on the street. You know, and, part and of the there's Big Bird and, and Snuffleupagus and whatever. You want to feel like you belong there, and you want everyone else to feel like you belong there. Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you're if you're fanboying and geeking out too much, they're, <laughs> they're going to probably judge you a little bit. So, yeah, I tried to play it cool. Um, so was uh, Bear in the Big Blue House your first break with them? or That was the first kind of big, consistent job, and that okay. was mainly because the, the, the head producer of that show, producer-creator uh, Mitchell Kriegman, um, had kind of gone through their roster of the upper echelon of guys mm. until they got to folks down on my list trying to find specifically, I think uh, r rumor has it that the, the character they were having a difficult time casting was Trilo, mm. a little green and white uh, lemur. Uh, with the blue and white striped tail. Um, he was supposed to be representative of like a two-year-old who's just learning how to talk and they had a difficult time uh, casting someone that all the members of the creative team felt was really kind of glomming onto the role. Mm -hmm. And so they sort of worked their way down the list auditioning people over a six-month period until they got down to the wow. part of the list that my name was on. So, so okay, so you make it to the big time, right? Yeah. And, and you get the big, big blue house. Right. And it, it, you, you know you're playing Trilo. Is it it's the kind of thing where they hand you the character, they go, you're cast, you play this, your interpretation of it, or like, uh, is, is there 
like how how does like dev- walk me through the development of a character? Well, like, if this... you're working with these guys, do you see the puppet first, and then you're like, oh, this is the voice, and this is how I'm going to do it, or is it kind of all up to you? Well, the part of part of uh, it, you know when they're casting a television production, they need you to kind of hit the ground running. They need to know that things are going to go from the day that the cameras are turned on. So they're mm-hmm. hoping that you've got the, the character by the time you get there, and it may it may change a little bit over time. So when you first audition, you get a package that describes the show. Um, you get a picture of the character. If they've built the puppet already, you'll get a picture of the puppet of the character, a description. And when you come into the audition, you're kind of bringing your take on the character. And the likelihood is if you get cast, they want you to bring that that you brought to the audition. Interesting. So with, with Trilo specifically, I came in with a, a very... Very specific voice, a very specific attitude. Um, kind of all the pieces were there. They got Did you have the voice on day one, or was it? Yeah, wow. yeah, the voice was I there. Now, my when yeah, I auditioned awesome. for him, his name was actually Rolo. Oh, um, and uh, there was another show on the Disney Morning Channel uh, called Roly Poly Oli. Oh yeah, I remember Roly Poly Oli. Yeah, when, when the creator of that saw that there was another show coming out on the Disney Channel with a name that was far too similar to one of his characters' names. He kind of put it out that the name needed to change. So actually, a few weeks after I was hired, we all put ideas out. Actually, it may have been closer to six or seven weeks. Um, mm. We all put names in a, in a hat, so to speak, uh, for the producer to kind of pick from. The writers put in some, I put in some. So Trilo was actually a name that I came up with. Yeah, oh, no kidding. So, yeah. cool. so does that mean you get a cut every time they <laughs> <No>. make it? <laughs> yeah. I wish. Sorry, I don't get anything off my monkey new shirt no, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, so, so you're a puppeteer, right? primarily do a lot of work with the puppetry obviously um we were hoping that maybe you could give us a quick real quick crash course on puppeteering because oh, yeah. puppeteering is a skill that needs to be yeah. learned it's not just something really. you just pick up yeah. and do right you right. know i mean anyone can do it but to do it well it, it takes training so tamra do you have some yeah. i think oh, we I brought some practice yeah. eyeballs yeah i do oh you guys brought the eyeballs here you go and so what she's handing me right now is that like one of the ways that we we learned uh, uh, specifically puppetry for television is uh, monitor puppetry is another thing we call it. In order to make the puppets look like they're looking at each other and other things in frame, uh, they have to have be held in a very specific angle. So these these eyes, these fake eyes, which you can't actually see, look like they're looking at the things in frame. So it means that we're normally looking at a television that sees what you guys see at home yep. uh, so that we can hold these puppets properly to be able to look right down the barrel of the lens, just barrel like I can with my hands. So my guy is... Puppet is. My guy's you're almost there. My, my guy guy's there? my guy's name is Doug. Yeah. Doug. Is Doug. I am Doug. Doug. Hi. Doug. I am Doug. Barbara. Okay, so there's, there's oh, nothing. I'm also a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't moving my mouth the whole time. That's impressive. I'm Doug. <laughs> <laughs> impressive. Impressive. I that up. Now you notice one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me try again. Good one, Gordon. I'm Doug. There you go. I'm Barbara. Well done. Oh, I'm, hi, Barbara. Hi. Um. All right. So what do we what do we need to know here? Uh, so the basic thing is, again, you want to point the eyes where you want them to look, but then whenever you talk, like you just did before, you got to make sure that, just like a human head, you're only moving the part that moves on your face. Your so jaw. Oh, the jaw is wow. the only thing that moves. So this being what's supposed to be like the top of the Bone head, and this jaw. is supposed to be the jaw, Bone you jaw. only want to move the jaw. Oh, ah. good, Tamara. You got this. Yeah, like that. Jaw. Ah, jaw. <laughs> good job, <laughs> Tamara. No See? No, no, if I Hi, were to talk Tyler. like Doug is talking, yeah. I would have to talk like that. Oh, oh. It doesn't really I'm like not it. very good at this. Hang on. It's all right. You're one, not a good puppeteer, Gordon. One, two, Gordon. three, four. Mm. Uh, you know You're what? There. I'll have to practice. practice. Well, Tyler, we want to thank you again for having you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for and uh, thanks for joining us and everything. Sure, thank you, Tyler. And um, you know, I, 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 I'm very excited to share that we have a, a brand new sponsor on the show. Oh yeah. And uh, we're really excited to have him because we don't have any sponsors yet. Nope. So um, we'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Bob Blankenship from Bob's Ball and Poem. It's summertime, which means it's sports time. And if you don't got the balls that you need, you gotta come to me. Because me, Bob Blankenship, I got balls. I got balls. I got blue balls. Basket. Big basket. I got huge balls. What the hell's this? Hey, Tim. Timmy. What is this? Come on. Supposed to be balls, buddy. Come on. Come on. You know what's going on. Jesus Christ. What's one thing you can't do in the summer without balls? Enjoy yourself. Go get some balls today. You make sure you get on down to Bob's Ball Emporium. 
grab my balls and have yourself a good summer. Basket. Foot. Blue balls. Huge. Don't be a coward. Come down to Bob's Ball Emporium and get yourself some balls. If you ain't got balls, you need to see Bob. Wink. Ha! <laughs> I said wink is a sound effect. People always ask me, Bob, why should I come to Bob Brankenship's Ball Emporium to get my balls? Well, I'll tell you something. My balls, they're not droopy. They're not soggy. They're not wet. They're not going to slip out of your hand. My balls, they fit nice in your hands. You grab onto my balls and you're not going to want to let go of them till the end of the summer. We are knee deep in balls. Come on down to my emporium. I hope you're not feeling this, but just for the hell of it, I'm going to grab my own balls. <laughs> you can't get those at the store. Those are for my wife. Those are for Gloria. Hey, let's face facts. Not everybody's got the balls I got, so I'm just going to come out and say it. Come on down to Bob Like It Just Ball Emporium and get yourself some balls, will you? Come on down and get some balls. Ah, oh, God damn it. I guess I deserve that. Gotta take a ball to the head every now and then, you know? Yeah, Bob. Good summer, right? Come say hi, 49 East State Street, Trenton, New Jersey, off the Southern Parkway. The New York Renaissance Fair started this week, and we're very excited because we have one of the representatives and one of the performers from the New York Renaissance Fair here with us. Please welcome the Duke of Warwick. Thank you so kindly, Gordon. It's so lovely to meet you. Very, very excited. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I hope all of you come to see us at the Shire this summer. It's quite wonderful there. Green, beautiful, lovely village. All sorts of wares and wonderful food that you can partake of. It's quite a good time if you actually decide to get your faces out of those things you carry around and look at what surrounds you. Maybe take just a moment away from the, what is it, enals, enals, something, and your, your, your instagrates and your, uh, I don't know, what is it, uh, twitings, twitangs, the thing with the bird. Look at the world around you for just a moment. Couldn't you, please, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it? Oh, hello. Hi. And what's your name, young gent? Harrison. Harrison! Have you had a lovely time at the Shire any time recently? I guess. You, you, you guess? Yes, I guess. You know the Shire with the, the, the chessboard with the gents fighting with swords and maces and shields? You've, you've been, yes? Yes. Did you look at any of it? No. And sort why of. not? Sort of. Right. What were you doing instead? Mostly mm -hmm. watching videos on YouTube. Of course you will. You, you tube, what is this? Is this some sort of musical instrument? No. A um, tube, like tubular bells? It's on um, a phone and a a you phone. watch stuff on a it. phone. Yes, you watch. You watch things on. So Instead it's the, of the block of glass I see people wandering yes. around with. Yes. That, that, your, that brain outside of your own skull yes. that you walk around staring at somehow drooling, uh, your eyes never blinking, your eyes never looking okay. up. It's, a, it's okay. a wonder you don't trip over everything. We don't drool. You, you don't drool? No. All right, I will give, sir, that I may have insulted you in some way, suggesting that you personally drool, but you cannot tell me that you haven't seen others of your ilk simply and the eyes transfixed, drying out because they never blink. Not true. Not, not true. You wanna try? Try what? A phone. Let me see it. What do you do with it? You, you can tap on one of those apps and something app? happens. Yes. You, you tap on an app. Yes. You app tap. Those are called apps. Ah, like you an swipe. apple? Swipe. Can you no. eat this? No, you cannot eat it. No? Swipe and you go to different Swipe? That, that is disgusting. But, Why but would I swing this? Oh, Swift. you, Swift. I see. Right. And you can click on any of those apps. Click. Not, not, not. Clicking the, away. Not flick. Click. Not no. flick. Like, like tap, like, like. Tap. Like that. Uh, uh, but on the phone. Oh. Yes, nothing's happening. I see. No, I, is that your face? Uh, that tap on an app. Tap on an app. Like it's this. one of those thingies. Right, like, like that. No, that, that. 
why don't we, like, couldn't we just communicate face to face like this? Hello! How Hi. goeth your day? I hope it's a pleasant one and your journey it forsooth yeah, yes, shall be is. exciting and see how this is. And then look, you can, what color eyes I have. You can see it. Blue. <laughs> Good for you. It's, it's so irritating. So, you have to understand how here I am wanting to communicate with you and yes. your face is in this. You have to understand how challenging that is. What, what's fun about that? You can play video games. Video games. What, yes. what about real games? Uh, tag, uh, pin the tail on the donkey. I'm pretty uh, sure they didn't have that back when they were back in the, what, what do you call it? The Renaissance? Yes. They mm. did not have that game. It was invented like a hundred thousand, like 300 years later. So what do you imagine we did back in the Renaissance? Um, drink beer mm. and um, eat turkey legs. So even the children were drinking beer and eating, chil eating turkey legs? Except for them. Except, so what were the children doing? Um, going to fairs? Right, Fair. going the to market? fairs, maybe I going about and seeing, oh, I don't know. Yeah, they went to puppet shows. See, this one would be me and this one would be you. Look, uncanny resemblance. Smile, really. Yes? It's like I knew I was going to meet you. So, here you are. Oh, look at a wonderful shire. Oh, let's wait. I'm just going to look at my video game. <laughs> Greetings, young gent. How fares your day, good sir? <laughs> what is it you're doing? <laughs> Go away, you bother me. Oh, Go away, shall I? No. How about I treat you like I feel? Look at me! Why won't you pay attention to the world around you, around you, look around you, stop looking at the world through that lens and pay attention to things <laughs> other than this screen. <laughs> For the dueling horse thingy over there, I was waiting in line, and you turned around, and here you are. I'm glad. Thank you so much for uh, talking and talking to him and making certainly. sure he's okay. Certainly, my lady. Thank oh, you. Yeah. How are you? I'm quite well. And how goes your day oh, thus far? Can we just get a quick selfie? Because I have to go back online because we're gonna do some like dueling like horses. Or something. Why didn't you have deodorant Let's back then? A, a do oh, why don't you have deodorant? That's so cute. Deodorant. Oh, do you mean I smell? Let me see. All right, guys, that was a heck of a show. We're really excited, and thank you again, once again, for Tyler Bunch for being here with us. And it's that time, once again, for Plugorama! 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 All right, Plugorama, Tyler Bunch, what are you plugging, pal? Well, if you can stream stuff, I got two things. You can either go to Amazon Prime, like we kind of said before, and uh, the first season, technically the first batch of episodes of The Tick. Oh. A new version of The Tick on Amazon Prime. I play a character that's in about four or five of those episodes. Check it out. And also Netflix, a uh, family-friendly show about theater curriculum called Julie's Green Room, <gasps> starring the incomparable Julie Andrews. And I played the, the one... Uh, talking animal character on that show whose name is Hugo the Duck. Outstanding, outstanding. Thank you again, Tyler, for joining us. Tamara Plugarama. You can watch our show every Friday at 10 o'clock and it replays on Saturday at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock. Only here on Wapakam. <laughs> I'm Gordon Goodall. I'm Tamara. And that's been the Monkey News Source. Thanks for watching. And that's the whole rack of bananas. bananas.